mm. on my canvas. So did you find the image a link? Mm. So go ahead and click on the assignments tab. Yeah, go to the yeah, assignments. I, I got tab. it. it. It didn't refresh when it when it got like updated for me. So I see it now. You see it? Yep. Perfect. All right. Thank and you. Just to make it easier for everyone, actually, what I can do. Because normally you guys don't submit anything in the attendance one, so I don't add that as an assignment link. But for this week, because we're going to do that, maybe I will do that. I will just add this here. There you go. Now you should be able to get it, get into it through either way. That works. <coughs> So Jennifer, you may want to do the same thing. Add that as an assignment link within your classes, Canvas page, get module. So they can just click on that and know where to find it. Okay, back to our stuff. Okay, so the microscopes that we have in our lab are what we called uh, compound microscopes. Why are they come called compound microscopes again? I think we went over it a little bit before, but I would like to make sure everyone has that right. Anyone? That's a hard to make talk when you are online. So why do we call our microscopes? Yes, it has two sets of lenses. And that's important because those two sets of lenses help to magnify an already magnified image, right? So we magnify the image once using our ocular micrometer or using our eyepieces rather. Um, and then using our actual objective lenses underneath. So you have a double magnified image. The eyepieces on our, uh, or the ocular lenses on our microscopes in the lab are 10X magnifications by themselves, right? So they're magnifying the image tenfold. And then your objective lenses underneath, on the nose piece, there are four of them. You have your 4X scanning objective lens, then you have your low magnification 10x objective lens. You have a higher magnification 40x objective lens. And then your last one is a 100x objective lens. And the 100x objective lens is our oil immersion lens. Because it's magnifying the image so much, we need that oil in there to help us um, kind of get that crisp image from it, otherwise it becomes a little bit blurry. The oil should only be utilized to use for the 100X objective lens. Our goal is to never get oil on any of the other lenses. So in class, I always tell you guys to mag you know, to fully um, focus your image all the way up to the 40X objective lens, then move your nose piece so that it is beyond the 40X objective lens add a drop of oil onto your specimen, onto your actual slide, and then go to your 100X objective lens to crisp up the image and to look at it in the oil immersion lens. And even though the oil immersion lens is meant to be utilized with oil, it still scratches the lenses. So you wanna make sure to clean up afterwards all the lenses, any place that there is oil with the lens paper and the cleaner that's provided for you in the lab. Now, when we look at our microscopes, right, uh, using the various objective lenses, how is the image going to change? So let's say I'm looking at a small cell underneath the microscope. How is that image going to change as I go to different magnifications? Yes, the image would get bigger and bigger. Um, and if I know the actual magnification of my image, right, 
does that mean I know the size of the image? So let's, it gets bigger and we know how much bigger it gets from its starting point. But do we know that size by just knowing the magnification? Do we know the actual physical size of the cell? Is not the way. Yes or no? No, right? Because all we can tell from the magnification is how much bigger it got compared to its original size. But we have no knowledge of what that means in physical size of that object. To figure that out, we have to um, have something, right? Some standard to compare the size with. What would be a way that we can measure the size of the cell? What would be that standard? How do we measure things in real life? We use ocular micrometer in real life. What's an ocular micrometer? Well, we can measure diameter or radius, but we still need to measure it with something. What do we measure things with? I'm getting way too many emails. A ruler, yes. And the ocular micrometer is essentially a tiny ruler that's in the eyepiece, right? So it is all the way up in your eyepieces and the ocular lenses, that's why it's called ocular micrometer. If you look at the ocular micrometer, right, it's gonna be up here um, in the eyepiece, uh, it's going to have basically 10, just like a ruler, it's going to be divided into multiple segments and each segment is then further subdivided. And in general, our ocular micrometers are divided into 100 little segments, right? So that's how many tick marks it's gonna have. Now, if I was looking at an object under 4X objective lens, right? And the object was, let's say, one ocular unit long, right? One tick mark long. Is it always gonna be one tick mark long when I go to a different lens? So Sarah says no, why not? Dylan says no too, why not? That's correct, it's not. Why isn't it always gonna be one tick mark long? Yeah, so if you look at the ocular, look at the location of the ocular micrometer, that ruler that we are so-called going to use to measure our cell, well, it's above the actual objective lenses. So it's never going to be controlled, right? It's never gonna change in size with your object. So it's your cell is never gonna be the same tick marks or same number of units um, if you go from one, lens to the other, right? For it to work, for that ruler to give me actually accurate measurements, right? Accurate size, it would need to be at the bottom next to my object. So it is controlled by the same, by the same magnification, it's getting magnified as well. And then you would see the same number of units. That's number one. And the second is that we need to still know how big is it? What is one unit equal to? Is one unit equal to one millimeter, one nanometer, one centimeter? What exactly is each one of those tick marks for this microscope? So because our ruler that we're gonna be using to, and all of you saw that ruler in the eyepiece last week, right? And one of your eyepieces, there was that ruler because that ruler is above the magnification, above the objective lenses, we are gonna have to calibrate it for each one of the objective lenses because each tick mark is gonna mean a different physical unit of length when it's used, um, when it is 
looked at using the 4x objective lens, a 10x or 100x, right? So we are going to, that process is called calibration. When we look at each one of the units under, you know, while our cell is in there at different magnifications, and we see what that physical unit is worth. So if we are going to compare those sizes, right? If we are going to compare these tick marks so that we can know what physical size they are, what do I need to put underneath it to compare it to, to get a physical length of each tick mark? What do I need underneath in the stage? It can't be my cell because I don't know how big it is. What do I need to use instead? <laughs> exactly. We need to use something underneath that we know the total length of. It doesn't have to be a ruler. It could be anything. It could be another cell that I know how big it is. It could be another object that I know how big it is, but it has to be something that we know the exact physical length of. We know that this length is equal to one millimeter or you know, 10 millimeter or whatever the case may be. So that's gonna come in the, in our case, we have a slide with a little tiny ruler on it that we know the length of. And that ruler is called a stage micrometer because it is placed on the stage down here, as opposed to the ocular micrometer that's placed in the eyepiece. Okay, so just kind of, you know, walking you through that process. Again, if you were in the lab, you would be looking at it um, and we'll you can do that when you get back. And we talked about this already, that if we are looking at that ruler, the ocular micrometer, and we switch from one magnification to the next, that ruler is never gonna change. It's always gonna be there in the same size, same shape in its entirety because it's above the objective lens control. However, our stage micrometer, that slide with a ruler on it, when we place that on the stage and we change the magnification, the size of that ruler will change exactly the same way any other object will. So we can take that known length ruler on the stage and calibrate our unknown ocular micrometer to it at each of the magnification, which is what we're gonna be doing today, okay? So to do this, the first thing we do is we make sure that our ocular micrometer is in our eye space and we try to make it as horizontal as possible. We can't on our microscopes. We are kind of stuck with however they are because they're glued in. Um, but you can kind of shift the entire eyepiece. Remember your binoculars are kind of movable. So you can kind of shift it around a little bit to make sure that it's as horizontal as you can get. And then we place our stage micrometer that slide with a ruler on it so that it's they are both kind of on top of each other, okay? So we kind of get them in line with each other and we get it so that both of them are visible, kind of like this. So the ocular micrometer under the microscope, you're gonna see it just like this, zero, 10, 20, all the way to 100. And you can see <coughs> the ocular micrometer is, you know, each 10 units, each unit is kind of graded on there. So you can see each of the tick marks. And then your stage micrometer actually in our lab are not labeled as 10, 20, 30, but they go the same way. They are also subdivided into exactly 100 subunits, okay? Now, the thing is that we know the total length of this stage micrometer. And we know that the stage micrometer, and I'm gonna start off here, the stage micrometer is equal to 100 stage units. It's subdivided into 100 units. SU for short, and that whole length is equal to one millimeter. If you do a metric conversion, because one millimeter is really large in terms of cells, it's a thousand micrometer. And because we know that information, we can calculate what distance or what amount of 
uh, you know, physical length, each one of the stage units are worked by simply dividing both sides by 100. So each stage unit is equal to 10 micrometer. Everyone with me so far? Yes, no, maybe. So. I promise you this will work. What is wrong with this stupid thing? There. So this one up here is your ocular micrometer, right? This is what you see in the in the eyepiece, right? And if we were to look at it, each one of these are going to be obviously further subdivided into five, 10, right? So each one of these lines is an ocular unit or OU for short, okay? So it's divided into 100 ocular. I promise you I can write. Or you for short, okay? Now, what we would do is when um, we have our stage micrometer, right? Our stage micrometer, if we start off always using the 10x objective lens because it's the easiest one to calibrate. Um, so this is looking at a cell under 10x objective lens. So when we look at an object under 10x objective lens, and I would fill out that uh, sheet as we go, because that is one of the questions it asks you, what's the total magnification on your object when you're looking at it using the 10x objective lens? Hundred x, good job. So that's going to be our hundred x total magnification, right? Now we know that our stage micrometer, right? This is our stage micrometer. It is also subdivided, right? So the stage micrometer, I'm gonna change the color of it to blue so it kind of keeps it constant. Stage micrometer is also subdivided into 100 stage units, SU for short. And we know that those 100 stage units are equal to one millimeter which is essentially equal to 1,000 micrometer. And so if we divide both sides by 100, you will get one stage unit is equal to 10 micrometer. This is gonna be your conversion factor to use for all the calculations you need to do for calibration, okay? So anytime we want to calibrate and convert from, um, from ocular micrometers or ocular units to micrometer, this is the one that we're gonna use. We're gonna first convert ocular micrometer units into stage units, and then we're gonna take the stage units and use this conversion factor to convert into physical length. So how do we do this? We do this by lining them up so that both my ocular micrometer and my stage micrometer are starting at the same point. So we line them up one on top of the other with the zeros lined up, the beginning of them lined up next to each other. And then we look at which one of them is shorter or longer. Is there one that's shorter or longer in this particular case? Yes, no, maybe. I lost, oh, chat is right there. No, they both look pretty much the same size, right? 
So because both of them look like the same size, right? I can draw, I thought I could draw there. I can draw an imaginary line right here, right? And it's pretty much at the same point from the end of one to the end of the other. And I can, to solve it out, I will make an equivalency, right? I'm making an equation that puts one next to the other. So 100 ocular units, which is the length of the entire ocular micrometer, are equal to how many stage units? In this case, 100, good job. So it are equal to 100 stage units. Now I know that each stage unit is equal to 10 micrometer. So I can solve it out by saying 100 stage units multiplied by the conversion factor, which is 10 micrometer divided by one per stage unit, right? Not divided, but rather per stage unit. The stage units are gonna cancel out and you would get 100 ocular units is equal to 1000 micrometer. And then dividing both sides by 100, I will end up with one ocular unit is equal to 10 micrometer. Believe me so far? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. So the calibration, right? The calibration of your 10x objective lens will be 10 micrometers per ocular unit. So again, remember these ones are also subdivided the same way. I know I can't draw the best lines like this. That's why I drew it out the other way. But let's say this was my, you know, stage micrometer. And let's say I have a cell. Ocular unit to stage units is gonna be this 100 ocular unit is equal to 100 stage units. And then for that last column, it's gonna be one ocular unit is equal to 10 or 10 micrometer per ocular unit. The way you would write would be, no, you're gonna write it as 100 ocular unit equals 100 stage units. And then for that last column, you would write 10 micrometer per ocular unit. That's gonna be the calibration. Okay, so I have a cell. I'm looking at it under the microscope and at 10X objective lens, that cell shows up five ocular units in length, okay? So that's my cute little cell. It's five ocular units in length, okay? If that's the case, right? How many micrometer is this cell? So the cell is five ocular units under 10X objective lens. So how many physical micrometers is this cell going to be? <laughs> exactly. So it's gonna be 50 multiplied by 10 because each ocular unit in 10X objective lens is 10 micrometers. and the answer would be 50 micrometer. Cool. Get the idea for that. This portion. So we can go to our next step. Okay. So let me write the 10x calibration is 10 micrometer. per ocular unit. And that's what you're gonna write at that very 
last column that the calibration was 10 micrometer per ocular unit. No way to put it. Maybe I should just put a different color or something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So let's do another one all by yourself. So this is looking at 4x objective lens. What's going to be our total magnification? When we are looking under the 4x objective lens, good, 40. So now we are looking at 4x objective lens, and that's going to be 40x total magnification. So always make sure on the quiz that you are keeping an eye on whether it's asking for the total magnification or whether it's asking for the objective lens. It's something that students forget to keep an eye on. <laughs> so do the same thing. Who is smaller now? Which one of the two is smaller now? Compared to the ocular micrometer. So right here is the ocular micrometer. This is your stage micrometer. Who is smaller? Yes, stage, one second. And I realized something, I apologize. I was trying to mimic what you see under the microscope and I have it a little bit off, so I have to fix it one second. Uh, how do I go back? Okay, now it's fixed. There you go. So, what would be our equivalence this time? Write that equation that we did before. Like for this one, we wrote 100 ocular units equal 100 stage unit. What will I write this time? Uh, not a hundred ocular units. And not a 40 state. You got the two numbers right. You didn't get them in the right place. So again, remember, this is the stage micrometer. This is the ocular micrometer. And you're going to do the same thing as before, right? You're drawing an imaginary line from the ocular to the stage. So yes. You see the entire 100 stage units in your field. And those entire 100 stage units are only equal this time to 40 ocular units. So you're going to say 100 stage units are equal to 40 ocular units. Go ahead and solve it out like we did before using the conversion factor and tell me what the answer will be. Anyone got their answer yet? Yes, exactly. So you, just to show you how that works out, uh, 100 stage units are going to equal 40 ocular units, right? Or you can write it the other way, actually, so it's easier. 
equals to 100 stage units. We already know what each stage unit is worth, right? So 100 stage units multiplied by 10 micrometer per stage unit. Stage units cancel out, 40 ocular unit equals 1,000 micrometer, dividing both sides by 40 this time, you will get one ocular unit equals 25 micrometer. So the calibration of your 4X objective lens, the you know calibration of your ocular micrometer is gonna be 25 micrometer, ha 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 ha, what is wrong with you today? per ocular unit, okay? So here's a great quiz question. Same cell, remember that cell we looked at at 10X objective lens? Well, we wanna look at it, we are now looking at it under the, um, under the 4X objective lens. How many ocular units is that cell going to be under the 4X objective lens. <coughs> what will be its act physical length when I'm looking at it in ocular units? Yes, good job, Amar. So it's going to be, and imagine just two little dots there. It's going to be two ocular units. Two ocular units, because the cell is always going to be, regardless of which magnification we look at, the cell is always 50 micrometer. Now that we know its size, we can predict how many ocular units it should be given the magnification and calibration that we have for that particular objective lens. Okay. So I'm going to be five feet no matter where I am. Similarly, the cell is always going to be 50 micrometer. And so how we got two is by taking 50, which we know is the physical size of that cell and divided it by the 25 micrometer per ocular unit, because this time each unit is equal to 25 micrometers, not just 10. So it only takes two ocular units to get to the 50. Yeah? <coughs> Good or no? We know it was 50 because I said it's the same cell that we looked at under 10X objective lens, and we already calculated it to be 50 micrometer, knowing that it was five ocular units under the 10X objective lens. And we knew the calibration at 10X objective lens too. Okay. Everyone good? Okay, let's change things up a little. So now we're gonna go to higher magnifications, right? So right now we were still under, you know, at about 100X. So let's go to 40X objective lens. And now suddenly it's gonna be really, really big, right? Um, so just to give you an idea on what this is supposed to be looking like, this is essentially, again, the tick marks. Oh, no, 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 escape. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 escape. No, escape. There. There. And there. So just to clarify all the tick marks for the first 10, that's what it is to make it easy. So what I would like you to do is this time, so this is now looking at 40X objective lens. So what's our total magnification this time around? 
400, good job. So this is 400X total magnification, right? Go ahead and draw that imaginary line. Who is bigger now, by the way? Is it the stage or the ocular micrometer that's bigger? Yes, this time it's the stage micrometer that is the big one. And the ocular micrometer, you always see the entirety of it, so you still see all of it. So go ahead and draw that line from the smallest, which is this time the ocular micrometer, down to the largest. And tell me what equation I should write. What equation will I write here? Yes, so you would write 100. Oh, it is. Oh, 100 ocular unit equals. 25 stage units. Go ahead, solve it out just like that and tell me what the answer would be. What is the calibration under 40X objective lens? <coughs> because this right here is 10, and then another 10, and then one, two, three, four, five. So these lines that I had were at five, right? That's why I showed you this first set. So one, two, three, four, five, 10, 25. So 25 stage units are equal to the entire length of the micrometer up here. So what's our calibration? No, you still have to give it to me in one micrometer uh, or one ocular unit. So remember, our calibrations always talk about a single ocular unit, not two. So divide it up further. No. 2.5 micrometer per ocular unit. Good job. Yes. So this time it's going to be 100 hair. 25 here, solve it out. It's 100 ocular units equal 250 micrometer. Dividing both sides, you end up with 2.5 micrometer per ocular unit. So same so, how many units is it gonna be now? If I wanna look at the same exact cell that I've been looking at, right? And I am now magnifying it to um, 400X. What is gonna be its total length in ocular units? So 
So now you can really appreciate things about it, right? I drew it a little bit too big. It's okay. Right. So again, you're doing the same thing. 20 multiplied by 2.5 is going to give you the full 50 micrometer. So yes, it's going to be. And now maybe I can see cilia on it. Who knows, right? I can see things inside it. I can see the nucleus a lot better. I can see the nucleoli. I can see other things maybe, who knows. So now I can really begin to appreciate it for what it is, right? So this time it's 20 ocular units is equal to two point is 50 micrometer. Cool. Okay. Last one. Hundred <coughs> X. So going on. This is our hundred X. So what's the total total magnification? Hundred X objective lens. This is the oil immersion lens. 1000 fold exactly so your total magnification this time is going to be 1000 fold so repeat that process what do you get if you draw this line again you know ocular micrometer you see the entirety of it you only see a very small area of your stage micrometer. How many points do you see exactly? What will I write for my equation? So 100 ocular unit, because I see the entire length of the ocular micrometer, is equal to what? Yep, 100 ocular units is equal to 10 stage units, solve it out the same way. Why is it 10? Because let's draw that line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's why. So only 10 stage units make up the entire length of the ocular micrometer, which is up on the top. Okay, so we're gonna solve it out just like we've done over there before, All right? So 100 ocular units equals 10 stage units. Multiplied by 10 micrometer per stage unit. Stage units cancel out, 100 ocular unit equals 100 micrometer. One ocular unit equals one micrometer. So our calibration for 100X is gonna be one micrometer per ocular unit. And so the same cell this time is going to be beyond this slide. It's going to be 50 micrometer in length or 50 ocular units in length. Right? Okay, so let me actually clear all. Just 
just to remind you of, again, all the calibrations and what we have. So you have 4x is going to equal 25 micrometer per ocular unit. Your 10x is going to equal 10 micrometer per ocular unit. 40x is going to equal 2.5 micrometer per ocular unit. And 100x is going to equal 1 micrometer per ocular unit. Right. And your cells under 4x was two ocular unit, for example, that particular cell that we looked at under 10x was 10 or 5. Under 40x was 20. And under 50x was 50. Cool. Everyone good so far? Okay. So um, when we are using our microscopes in the lab to calculate or to measure cells, these are the calibrations that you're going to use. And this is how you would be calculating the sizes of different structures or cells, nucleus, maybe size and length of projection whatever it is that you decide to make your observations on, right? Today, we are not gonna have the microscope, so we don't have an ocular micrometer, we don't have that ruler, but we still need this calibration. What do you think we're gonna calibrate today? Since we do not have the ocular micrometer, what are we gonna be using instead? Remember, we have digital images, so what are we gonna do instead in order to uh, calibrate and be able to measure appropriately and actually decide the real, you know, be able to measure actual sizes of cells, not just relative sizes of cells. Pixels. So yes, so images are built with pixels in our digital world. So we are going to be calibrating the pixels of our image to physical units of length in micrometers. Okay, so let's do that now. So you're gonna now go into clear. Okay. okay, so we are now going to go into our image and we are going to be talking about that. <coughs> So to be able to use image J, um, again, you can, if you're just counting cells, right? You don't need calibration. You can just count. So we are gonna, I'm gonna show you how you open things. What you would need to do is download the images that you're gonna be working with in order to utilize them in image J. So you can just open them from my Google Drive. You have to download them first. So you wanna download, the pictures for cell counts, 
and you're gonna download the calibration images. Now for calibration images, the only one that you need is actually the 400X, which is right here. This is the only image. When you look at it, it will say 40X objective lens. That's the only image that you need to calibrate to for today. Later on or at another time, if you need the 10X or the 1000X, then you would take that particular calibration, okay? Now, when we are calibrating our images or image J, there are certain things we need to keep in mind. Each microscope can have slightly different uh, or very majorly different depending on the ocular units uh, or the ocular micrometer, depending on the magnification of our ocular lens, they can have dramatically different calibrations. So you have to take the images of your stage micrometer using the same microscope and the same magnification as your data images. So because I used our front of the lab microscope to take the images that you got today, I'm giving you the calibration images also taken at the front of the lab, the same microscope using the different lenses. So here you can see that example. This is you know, the front microscope. This is using the 4X objective lens. This is using the 10X objective lens. This is 40 and this is a thousand. 40 and you know, 100X objective lens. Here is the side microscope and already you can see the difference, right? For four and 10, they look different. Just looking at this image, you see that it was not gonna give you the same calibration. So depending on the microscope you use, your calibration will change. So you have to make sure that the images you have are using the same microscope as your calibration images. Okay, so what the only one you are gonna need for today is going to be this calibration front microscope for 40X. So at least at minimum, if you can only download a few images, this is the one that you wanna download. I already have them downloaded, so I'm just gonna open them. Once you have it downloaded, you're gonna open it in image A. You're not opening it by itself. You're going to go into this browser image. You see how it gives you this toolbar? It's a fluff free software because it's open source. It doesn't come with bells and whistles. It just gives you a toolbar. There you go, do your what you need to do. So you are gonna go to this, open, and it will, it should give you the option to open a file. So I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna select a local file on my desktop. And I'm gonna go to my calibration images and I'm actually gonna open up a couple of them so I can show you how they change, right? So I'll open my 10X, for example. And I'm gonna open a different, there's two side by side kind of. Right, so here are two things that you will need to see for these, so right here, right? Now, because they are these images are taken using the stage micrometer, the same stage micrometer, we know how many micrometer each one of these, the distance between two tick marks is. And what is it? Everyone should already know that information, right? So what is the physical length between two tick marks? No. It is not five, but... Ten. Your, remember the conversion factor 10 micrometer per stage unit, it's still the same, 10 micrometer per stage unit, but you're just converting pixels into micrometer. So if you have an image, a calibration image where these tick marks are really, really far, you know, really, really close together, and you do not think you can draw a line between them uh, properly, right? To get the line, by the way, you are just gonna use this line tool you can instead choose to draw the line from the middle of the first to the middle of the fifth, for example. Some, a unit that you can do consistently, right? And then you would go to analyze and measure. 
and it's going to give you the length in pixels. So it tells me that my length in pixels is a 132. I will then go to analyze and say set scale. When you go to set scale, it's already going to give you that distance in pixels. In the next tool, it says known distance. Well, I'm looking at five stage units. So what's my known distance? How many total micrometers should it be? Since I'm looking at five stage units, what should I write? Since each stage unit is 10 micrometer, yes, it's going to be 50. And for my unit of length, I'm going to say micrometer. And down here, it's going to calculate your calibration. It's 2.64 pixels per micrometer. So as long as the image you're looking at was taken using the 10x objective lens on the front microscope in the teaching lab, your calibration will be 2.64 pixels per micrometer. You guys got that? So when you look at this, right, it's telling you to do the same thing for all of those. So you're going to write those pixels per stage unit and then pixels per micrometer. And that's how you're going to do that. So you actually, sorry, you do need all four images. You're going to use those images from the front of the microscope and you're going to write those calibrations in this. So for here, because I did five, you know, so there are two things I can do. I can write for my 100x, I could write 134 for pixels per five stage units, right, to specify that, or I can divide it up and then it's 2.64 pixels per micrometer, right? Did that make sense how you how we did this? So you just need to basically measure the distance right between two points and then do that. Now once you have figured out your final calibration and you are now ready to take your measurements, you are going to then just do distance in pixels. Uh, you are going to open the set scale and you can manually set the scale to your calibration that you wanna do. So in this case, if I was gonna open images at 10X and I was gonna using 10X objective lens and start measuring them, I could click global and it will keep that in. Yes, I can walk you through this and I'm gonna walk you through by going to the different one. Um, don't save. So here again, I'm gonna close this one now. Actually, let's do it again. So this time I'm gonna try to just take one of my units. So I'm using the line tool. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna make a line, a straight line, right? I want a zero angle from the middle of one line to the middle of the next because two tick marks, the distance between two tick marks is what I'm looking at. And I'm gonna go to analyze. And you can go straight to set scale. It's going to open up distance in scale pixels, 30. Known distance for each stage unit was 10. So see how it gives me a little bit different now? That's because it's easy to over make that line, right? I didn't do that line as accurately as I could do when I had five. But I would just write 30. 10 known is 10 and micrometer. And it's gonna give me the scale down here. It's gonna tell me how many micrometers, uh, how many pixels per micrometer. So if this is how I had done it, I would have written three pixels per micrometer. So you will have a little bit of variability depending on how accurately you draw that line, right? So I can do it a third time, for example. Sometimes it's, if you think that you're not being accurate, you can do it two or three times and then take the average of those three. Or you can do what I did, which I feel always is the better of the two ways to do, take more than uh, those two segments because it's easier to draw this line consistently between a larger distance than between that tiny one. 
and then subscale, 129. I'm looking at five, so it's 50. And see, now I got that 2.6 again, which is probably the correct one, pixels per micrometer. So everyone clear on how they calculate the calibration for pixels in image A? So you can do that using those four images, using the front microscope images, right? Um, for the 40X uh, total magnification, so using the 4X objective lens, again, you're gonna see they are gonna be really close to each other. So you want to take the distance between five or 10 to make it more consistent. Yes, we are doing that part two on the worksheet right now. That's right. That's exactly what we are doing. So yeah, so you're measuring the length between the tick marks and each tick mark, the, right now it's not the cell, this is tick marks because you're calibrating your uh, image J software. So you're figuring out your calibration, yes. So again, I'm opening my 40X objective lens image now, right? This is the calibration front microscope 40X. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go from the middle of one to the next, right? Between two tick marks, I made that line. Analyze, set scale. It says distance in pixels is 102. My known distance here, again, should be 10 micrometer. And my scale is the calibration is 10.2 pixels per micrometer. So in my case, over here, <laughs> over here, I would write, what did I get? Sorry, 102, 102 for stage unit. And over here, I got 10.2 for my parameter. This is using the 40X objective lens, so 400X total magnification. On, if you would mind writing your messages as uh, just like messages to everyone in the chat, everyone probably has similar questions. So, and I'm answering them. So it makes it easier for people to understand why I'm answering certain things. Okay, everyone good? So you're gonna repeat that process for the 4X objective lens. So the image magnification, right? This is the total magnification, not the objective lens. So 4X objective lens, 10X, 40X, and then that. No, it's 102 divided by one stage unit. It's one stage unit in this case. It should let you use the line. Maybe you haven't closed. You have to close the set scale out before it lets you use the line again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you can do those after I finish demonstrating the rest of the ex exercise to you. Now you got this portion. Um, I will tag a video for you guys as well to watch if you need a refresher on how to calibrate. Uh, it's on the same channel that I have all the other videos. Okay, and I'll post this as well afterwards once it becomes available. Now, let's see how we are going to do our cell counts and our measurements, right? So let me open an example image. So I'm going to go to my demo picks and I'm going to open an image. So this is using the 400X. Uh, one more thing before we do that, sorry, open. One thing you want to make sure is to make sure that the actual dimensions of your images are the same between your calibration and the um, the data images. So because you're gonna be using the 400X, right? The 40X objective lens, you wanna write down this number, the 2592 times 1944, 
Uh, most of your images should be at the same resolution, same kind of scale, right? So right now you can look and see my demo image is the same. If it's not, you have to adjust it. And I'll show you where to do that. So ah, I am dropping things left, right, and center, and I don't want to bring it. So always write down. Uh, Jacqueline, did it let you use it? Or did you figure out? Or did it still give you trouble? Okay, so once I finish demo, uh, then I can look at yours. You can share your screen and I can help you. I'll open up a breakout room where you guys can come in and check out. Okay, so we're going to write down this number 2592 times 1944. But in our case, this demo image is the same one, so I don't need to do anything to it. If it wasn't, I would go to image scale. And right here where it says width and fix, you know, height, I would switch that to 2592, 1944. And I would say not in the new video. I just want it in the same exact place. I just want this adjusted. It's not, if it doesn't change, obviously it didn't need to be changed because it was the same thing. Now, how do I count cells? To count cells, I am going to go to these multi-point tool. Now, if you do a right click on the multi, or if you double click on the multi-point tool, you can see that you can make it look different things. So I can have a cross, I can do a dot, I can do circle, I can make the color different, I can make the size different, whatever I want, right? And I want to label the points. So I'm gonna go ahead and label the points. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, this is kind of like a cell counter. So I'm gonna count the cells first. So I'm just gonna click on each of the cell and it's going to count that as a cell and it's going to put a number on it, which is great. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and count all the cells within this image. I can't see all the much. I'm going to make sure I don't miss any cells. If you miss something, it's okay. You can go back and catch them. You want to catch all the cells that have both the cell and the nucleus there. These ones on the side that you cannot fully see, you don't need to count. Once you have counted all the cells, um, now remember we also need to count the number of nuclei in the same exact image. So I'm gonna go back or to this multi-point tool and right here it says 19, that's the number of cells I have. I'm gonna go to one where it says counter, I'm gonna say one, not two. Okay, let me make sure I did that. Yes, okay. And now I'm gonna count the nucleus. So right here, this is my nucleus. So I'm gonna count, you saw how all of the first numbers turn to zeros now and yellow. They are counting the cells and now I'm clicking on the nuclei. And I'm gonna click on all the nuclei within my image so I can keep a count of them. And now you will notice it just calling them ones, it's not giving the number. So you'll be like, well, how am I gonna keep count of them? Well, once you're done, you can go back to this multi-point tool. And it's gonna tell you how many nuclei you counted. So I counted 22 nuclei, and that's the number I will write down for my nucleus. And it count, if I go back to zero, it's gonna tell me how many cells are counted and it counted 19 cells. So I can write my number of nuclei and my number of cells for this particular slide, right? So this one, for example, this one was, let's say it's dex. Let's say this was C to C12. Then for my C to C12, I would write right here, C to C12. Number of cells was 19, number of nuclei was 22, and then I will do that calculation nuclei per cell, 22 over 19, whatever that ratio comes out, that's what I'm going to write down there. Okay, 
So far, so good? Yes? No? Maybe? The next thing you're going to do is measure. To measure is where you need the calibration set. So I'm going to go to set scale. It's my 40x, uh, 400x total magnification using the 40x objective lens. So I'm going to go to my sheet. It should say 102. So I'm going to say 102. And I'm going to say 10 right there. And I'm going to click on global so it saves it. So I just have to set it once and then any image I open today afterwards, it should always say that already. So I don't need to rechange it, but you can double check if you needed to. And now I'm gonna measure my cells to, so I'm gonna say, okay, double check and make sure the scale is set. Oh, because I did not set it. Why can't it? Give me. Usually has a thing that says okay. I don't know why that's gone. Global. Maybe you need to open the window a little bit to see the okay. Make sure you click okay. Now when I go back. Oh yeah, I didn't change that. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you for fixing that. It's more importantly that, you know, you have to make sure to click, click OK. I couldn't see the OK the first time. OK, once you have said it, now it's going to be 40x is just telling you that it is using the 40x objective lens. The cell picture is using the 40x objective lens. It is 400x total magnification. Yes. So to measure the cells, remember, you're going to take the smallest and the biggest cell. So you're going to look at your image. You're going to see which one you're going to call your smallest cell, the biggest cell. So, um, and you're going to be measuring them long way. So I think this one is probably the longest one. So I'm going to go from... Okay. What is wrong with your selection? Select none. Delete for now. Okay, so I'm gonna measure my entire length of the cell. So this one's a very long cell. It had this long projection. And I'm gonna say measure. And it's going to give me its length right here. And this length is in micrometers. Okay. So again, you may need to open up the window to see 148.573. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to measure the nucleus because you have to measure the length of the nucleus too. Again, same way from the membrane to membrane. And I'm going to go to measure. I did not measure micro. I did it twice. So. 15.9 micrometers. So that tells you how you would measure it. And you could keep doing it for as many cells as you needed. This seems to be the smallest cell. So let's look at this one. That's also a full size cell, kind of. And again, just keep measuring, and it will give you 34.1. And then I measure the nucleus. And it's going to give me the nucleus. OK? So you will notice the nuclei are going to have more uniformity in some cell culture, you know, in the cell and their size than the cells themselves. The cells can have more variability. So once you have all your, those numbers, you keep writing them down where you need to write them down. So over here, you're going to write the cell micrometer, you know, uh, the biggest cell, the smallest cell. Now you can um, keep them in pixels and use the calibration, right, to divide them up yourself. Or you can write them in micrometer and convert them to pixels. Both of them are good practice. So either way is fine for me. 
And you're going to do that for each of your image. Total number of cells, total number of nuclei. And for each image, you're going to take the biggest cell, the smallest cell, and the typical cell. OK? So um, any questions before you guys do the exercise on your own? Can I show you one uh, what? Oh, to convert the micrometer to pixels? Sure. So <clears throat> let me share the screen again. So 148.573, right? So actually let's fill some of this out so we can do that. So for the one that I was looking at right now, the biggest cell that we had was 148.573. And the nucleus for that was 15.918. You don't want to do more than three decimal points, by the way, ever. Um, then the other cell was 34.148 and 15.8. And so if I have the set distance in micrometer, I can go up and I can look at my calibration for 400X was 10.2, I believe. So I'm basically just gonna divide by 10.2. Not divide, multiply by 10.2. So because it's 10.2 pixels per micrometer, so I'm going to multiply it by 10.2. So this would be, you know, one, four, eight, five, probably like 1,490 or something. But that's what you would do to get those numbers. <coughs> I'm finding a calculator. 148.573 multiplied by 10.2. Oh, 1515, so 1515.4 pixels. Now, let's say you wanted to check that you did that correctly, right? Um, I could go back to my set scale, for example, remove the scale and just uh, no scale. And then I can measure, again, like this may or may not be exactly the same line, right? But Close enough. Analyze, measure. No, I still have the, I didn't hit. Remember to hit OK, because I did not hit OK. Click to remove scale. OK. And now it gives me the length in pixels. Measure. 1438. So that's how you could do it. Uh, if you don't have a scale and you are just without scale putting all the numbers, they'll be in pixels, and then you would convert them into micrometer by dividing them with 10.2. And if you have them in micrometer, you can multiply by 10.2. Okay. That's it. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is work on this assignment while you're on the Zoom for at least, you know, enough time to go through one image and make sure that you understand how to do it. If you want to stay on here till 1230, you'll be done with the assignment anyway. You should be easily able to do it within an hour. But um, at least get through one image so we know that you got it and it's not a problem for you. If you have a problem, I can help you out. I can explain it again for you or sh uh, show you how to do it by you sharing the screen with me. And then you can go and work on the rest on your own, okay? Make sure to submit that sheet into that attendance assignment. That should now show up under your module as well. Yes, I can help you with your thing now. So let me stop the recording and then I'll make a breakout room where 
you and I can go and anyone else who needs help can come in too. Okay.